Hi, I'm Chef Dave from Dave's Specialty Foods and another cool cooking demo. First of all, I want to welcome um, anybody who's already in the Dave's Specialty Foods family and has been cooking with us and attending things and events that we do. We've been here for 18 years. Welcome, you're awesome, we love you and you're so cool. And if you're new to seeing any of these videos that happen to pop by on a YouTube stream or a friend passes along to you, we love you and you're cool too. So uh, welcome to uh, kind of another edition of, uh, we like to cook kind of fairly quick basic stuff. We did a muffin video the other day, got a lot of cool comments on it. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make an omelet. This is something that when I do something like this in a large group cooking class, there could be a hundred people in a room, a uh, large audience, and we'll do two or three things and, and I'm doing something breakfasty or uh, brunch or something like that as a topic. And then everybody knows I'm, I'm gonna demo an omelet. But when I, when I start to begin to cook an omelet, I've never seen more like 20 or 30 people get out of their seats and come up and they wanna look and they wanna see what's in the pan and how to do it. I get so many like close up questions and how did you do that? So here we are, we're gonna show you how to make an omelet. It's, it's basic, it's not so silly, it's basic, but um, it doesn't have to be complicated and a real big pain in the neck. So not a lot of things you need. I'm a big uh, fan of being simple, so we're gonna do arugula, I have some arugula over here. Fresh arugula, organic of course, please. We have our organic butter, we have our good organic eggs. They're nice brown guys over here. They're all discolored and mottled and dysfunctional, we like that. And uh, we have some good cheeses, we'll talk about that. And uh, that's it. So it's basically a cheese and arugula omelet, salt and fresh ground black pepper. Very simple. These places that put all these funky things in your omelet. Um, at the end of the day, I think all we want to do at the end of the day is have a good, some greens and some cheese. Okay, so here we go. I've got a really low uh, fire burning here. So I'm just going to kind of preheat the, the pan just a little bit, just to get a little kind of base heat on there. You don't need to do that at home, but for the demo, this will help us, okay? Uh, first thing we're starting with, very good pan. This happens to be a Kelfeline pan. This is about a $100 pan. Uh, I got this at, uh, uh, actually, Carson's, if I can say that, um, uh, years ago uh, when they were around. But, um, you know, it was very easily obtainable. But I cater a lot in people's houses, and I don't see a lot of good pans in houses, you know. Uh, this happens to be Kelfeline. It's kind of like an all-clad pan. It's very good pan. I don't think you could buy a better pan, maybe a different one, but it's going to really be the key because number one, it's not non-stick. A non-stick pan with that black Teflon garbage in there, no good, we don't need the Teflon in there. Um, and uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a band-aid on the thing. The fact that there's no Teflon means we can get a little bit of brown, a little bit of crunchiness on the, on the edge of the eggs. Uh, the Teflon doesn't, get, doesn't give us that finish. Um, and a lot of Teflon pans are scratched up, they're usually small. So you want a good pan like this. This is stainless steel that's got a nickel finish inside so it won't react with anything. You know, it won't react with lemon or cheese or arugula or eggs or anything acidic. Uh, and in between here, which is the key, is aluminum, magnesium, and copper, which is why they call it a clad pan, okay? So uh, a little more information than you need, but it's a good pan. So a lot of people, I think, have a hard time cooking it out because they just, they have a crummy pan. So really good pan is going to help. And the fact that your omelets might not be coming out good or your scrambled eggs aren't coming out well, your pork chops are sticking to the pan, you got a bad pan. Usually is the, the problem with all of that, okay? So good pan. So here we go, we're gonna bust a couple eggs up in here. Um, when I was in cooking school, we used to follow this rule that I hated at the time, and it was that if you're gonna crack an egg, you're gonna, I need, let's say, um, I'm gonna make a five egg omelet here. And we've, we're going, and the reason I'm making a five egg omelet is because I always say, if you've got five people you're cooking for, don't make five omelets. Make two and cut them. So I'll show you how we do that, okay? So here's quite simply five egg omelets. What, what we used to do in cooking school was we would break an egg, and then that's my little garbage bowl here, and we would check the egg out, you know. Obviously, there's no chicken forming in here, so we don't have to freak out about that. And we dump it into our other bowl like that, okay? The reason being, and as much of a pain in the neck as I used to think it was, it's happened to me twice last week. Now, we're at home with all this virus stuff going on. Twice last week, I made eggs, and I cracked an egg, and I had like three eggs in a bowl, and I cracked an egg, and boom, it was a nasty egg, and it wrecks all of the eggs. So it's a, it's a quick little tip. It's kind of a pain in the neck, a little bit, I guess, but i, I be honest with you, I never did it. I never do it. So suddenly now I've got, had a couple bad eggs. So each time you do an egg, you're only wrecking the one egg that's bad rather than losing the whole batch. So quick little tip, whatever, okay? So there's three, there's four eggs. So we're just gonna keep it simple here. Whoa, look at how thick and, and, and this membrane here. This is a really strong egg, okay? So in we go. 
five really nice eggs. I prefer to make a little, I don't, most of the time you go to a restaurant, they probably give you a five or six egg omelet. You know what I'm talking about? They're too big, they're dry, they're a weird color. They don't look like what you make at home. That's why home is the place to make an omelet, okay? So, uh, we're not gonna put anything in here. We're gonna season the eggs in the pan, not in the bowl. Because you season in the bowl, all the, all the salt is heavy, it, flows, it sinks to the bottom and it sticks. So we're gonna season the eggs once they hit here. Okay, so we're gonna whisk, whip this up with our little fork. Easy, easy. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so let's get about a medium. I don't know if you can see the pan on the fire. Maggie's behind the camera, say hi to Maggie. So I'm gonna put a nice hot fire, okay, pretty hot. Okay, I give this pan a little tap. I know it's fairly warm. We're gonna take a little nub of butter here. Obviously, if it's too warm, uh, this will sizzle and burn. Obviously, poor choice. You need to have a cool pan, okay? So one of the tricks to making an omelet, or, or uh, if I can say most things that are going to go into a pan, is we're going to have a clean, dry pan. We're going to put some butter in here for this omelet, and we're going to let the butter melt pretty much, and we want to swirl it. Can you see that, Maggie? On the, it's we want to swirl the butter, get it melted. This is a good butter. It's all it's very fatty butter, so it's not going to sizzle that much. Okay, the more your butter sizzles, the 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 lesser butter it is. There's a little bit of water in there. Okay, so you see that swirl. So we have a nice full covered pan, very hot. Okay, we got a little bit of a sizzle when we add our eggs. All right. Now don't touch it. Let that sit for a second. Let it develop kind of a crust. A little bit of salt in here. My salt is mixed with pepper here, so I have a salt and pepper mix. A little bit of salt, okay? A little bit of, uh, use a sea salt or a kosher salt. Always fresh ground pepper. Don't, don't get pepper in a, in a little jar, okay? So, you see the, the crust forming in the omelet? This is so easy that that's why I think people freak out a little bit, okay? So, we're gonna do this a little, little bit of a swirl. See, this is not a non-stick pan. I haven't done anything funky here on the video. This is a one-take shot here. It's not sticking. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the edge Pull the edge and pull the edge. See how I tilt the pan as I go? Okay. I'm gonna just play with that a little bit. Okay. All right. So we're gonna tilt the edge here and just let this form a little bit of a, a little bit of a kind of crust you see on the edge. Okay. Nonstick pan is never gonna give you this. Can you film real quick here, Frog? This is gonna be a couple cheeses we're gonna use. This is a Sage Derby cheese from England. It's kind of made like a cheddar with these little cheese kind of. Uh, curds in here that are tossed with a sage uh, pesto almost, if you will. And this is an aged cheddar cheese here. Very simple, we're gonna grate them by hand. We don't use grated cheese, we grate our cheese, okay? So, look at my omelet, it's already basically done here, okay? So, we pull this until you can't really, you got a little bit of raw stuff on here, but you can't really pour any more egg from the inside of that. So, best way to get something off the heat, see how I have, I have heat here, I have this other surface here that I can move the pan to. The best way to get away from the heat is get away from the heat, okay? So just pull that up. What we have is this fluff, okay? It's kind of like funky all nasty, ugly, sexy looking here. And we've got this egg, look at that, not sticking at all. We've got a little bit brown on the bottom. We've got just a little bit of kind of gooey egg on the top here. That's fine because when we roll the omelet, the heat from the eggs will cook the inside. Nothing worse than a dried up omelet, okay? So that's where I want to stop. I'm going to shut the heat off. Okay, pull that off the heat. All right, now, let's clean up our mess. Now, really simple. Let's put a little bit of grated uh, cheddar. Okay, simple, simple, simple. Okay, just this, this will be fine for about a minute here. A little touch of grated cheddar. Look at that. A little touch of green sage derby. This is funky. Look at that cheese, okay? Look at that. Awesome. Okay. You don't have to live in the world of the craft single, okay? That's a nasty world, okay? So, here goes our little cheddar, okay? A little bit of uh, this sage derby cheese here. Let's get this all up here. This is a lucky a lucky time here because usually you grate. You ever have that where you grate cheese and you have this big pile of cheese? When you lift up the grater, you only use a little bit of it and you're stuck with this leftover cheese. That was perfect. A little bit of arugula, okay? Okay, this is that organic girl, uh, organic arugula. Very simple, okay? You can use spinach if you want here too, okay? Also, with an omelet, did you notice I just cooked the eggs in the pan? Never saute a bunch of stuff in the eggs. An omelet is eggs wrapped around stuff, not eggs with a bunch of stuff inside of it. That's a disaster, okay? So we're gonna go right on our cutting board here, okay? So here's what I do, okay? I just give this a roll. See how this doesn't even wanna stick at all? We're gonna give this a roll and let it just fall out. Look at that, that is awesome. Look at the look of that. That was even slow motion without being slow motion. He's so good, he can do slow motion without doing slow motion. 
It's an omelet doing slow motion disguised as an omelet doing slow motion. All right, let's get our plate here now. Now, here's what I'm talking about, okay? We want to take our omelet. This is way too big. This is about the size of an omelet. There's my hand, okay? There's going to, that's a sexy hand, okay? This, th this is way too big to eat, okay? It's five eggs. This is about what you see in restaurants. It's just way too big. Now, what's happening here is we want to let this just breathe just a little bit. We've cooked the inside, but see how soft and just, just, just silky this is, okay? And you see that browning that happens, that little bit of a crispy? Awesome, okay? Uh, we can garnish this with a little bit of cheese on top if we want, okay? Nothing wrong with that. A little touch of a garnish, okay? Just be... Minimal, okay? Here's what I do, okay? If you're gonna have guests over, we can cut this. Now look at how good this is gonna look on the plate. We can cut this into pieces, okay? Never make one omelet, that's why people don't do this. You make one omelet for three people, you're gonna be sitting here doing omelets, and you've got your pan here that's starting to get kind of sticky, and by the third one it's sticking, and you're thinking, oh, I hate making omelets. Just make one omelet and cut it, okay? This is plenty, this with a piece of toast I think is great, okay? But we, we're gonna happen to put the whole thing on here, nothing wrong with that. Okay, let's garnish it a little bit, okay? By the way, I have washed my hands. Thank you very much. Okay, let's peel a little bit of fresh mandarin orange here. Okay, these are hot right now. When I was living in France, we just ate, I ne we never really knew about mandarin oranges. We didn't get these here. We didn't have these little things that we have now. And uh, we used to eat bags of these on the, on the train. Okay, so here's your little mandarin orange. Lovely. Let's wipe up a little bit. Mm, perfect. Arugula and uh, sage derby omelet. Let's get in here. Let's cut this little guy right here. Mmm. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. It's wiggly. Mm. <laughs> mm. If I can say perfection, it's perfect. All right, peace. Go cook.